Hello guys, my name is Dinewolf, and welcome to Surgery Games. So, this one is a retinal detachment surgery. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Hello. Squad's retinal detachment surgery. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. The retina is located in the back of your eye. When we see, okay. light enters the eye. It is focused onto the retina, which acts like the film in a camera feeding information to the optic nerve allowing you to see. As you get older, the vitreal fluid, which is the gel in your eye, can contract, pulling the retina away from the eye. This contraction can cause a small tear in the retina, allowing the fluid to seep behind the retina, detaching it from the back of the eye. This can cause loss of vision. A retinal detachment is a very serious ailment that must be dealt with as soon as possible after discovery. Okay. Symptoms that you may experience with a detached retina include seeing floaters or frequent flashes of light, shadows appearing in your peripheral or side vision, a gray curtain moving across your field of vision, or a sudden decrease in your vision. Again, if you experience any of these symptoms, contact your eye doctor immediately. Today, we're going okay. to perform a retinal reattachment you called a, a pneumatic eye. retinopesky. The surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. Really? Our patient today is a 30-year-old man who recently noticed flashes in his vision. His ophthalmologist dilated the eye and detected a retinal tear and a detachment. He recommended immediate surgery to limit additional loss of vision. Let's begin. Okay. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. This will make our patient drowsy, but not and put I him need. to sleep. Can you place yes. the needle for me? Okay, so, I think these games will be interesting to do for Fridays um, and they're informative too so that's why I'm doing them it's a needle right there right there yes cool yeah okay just prior to surgery additional drops of anesthetic are applied Eye drops too. Okay, makes sense. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide during the that, procedure. Place the speculum for a, me, please. Um, speculum, like in clockwork orange, with the eyes are held open, and he's forced to watch the movie. Great movie, by the way. Oh, <laughs> hello. Now that the patient <laughs> is anesthetized, we insert a syringe Hi. into the eye. Uh, oh, ooh. Ooh. Now we inject Ooh. an air bubble into the yeah. vitreal fluid. Okay. As the bubble expands, it pushes the retina back against the wall of the eye. Okay. Mm. With the Still. retina back in place, mm -mm. we can now seal the tear mm -mm. using a freezing probe. The probe is touched to the outside freezing of the probe. eye where the tear is. Okay. This freezes the tear back in place. It may take several touches depending on the size of the tear. Needles going into eyes. That shouldn't happen. You shouldn't ha be putting needles in your eyes. Mm. The action is also done with laser. Okay. The tear is now repaired. The needle insertion mm. will heal quickly. Can you remove the speculum? Yes, I can. Cool. <coughs> and we have two Our more. patient needs someone Afterwards. to drive him home after the surgery. Okay. And he shouldn't drive until he regains <coughs> sight in the eye. Okay. We'll prescribe medicated eye drops to use several times each day for a few weeks after the surgery. And he'll need to wear a protective eye shield while sleeping or napping for about a week after surgery. Okay. A special pair of post-op sunglasses also need to be worn to protect Ooh. his eye from sunlight That's and other cool. bright light as his eye recovers. <coughs> However, the biggest part of the recovery is head positioning. The bubble floats to the top of the eye. So the head okay. must be positioned to keep the bubble against the detached portion of the eye. Oh. This means the patient must keep his head facing down, or the position indicated by his surgeon, for at least a week. Sight returns well, slowly sleeping. to the eye over several months as the bubble must dissolve and be replaced by vitriol fluid. However, once the bubble dissolves, vision is usually restored to close to the previous level. You did a great job today, surgeon. While you're here, great. try one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. We have a silicone breast implant. And a virtual canal surgery. But I'm not gonna do either. What we're gonna be doing is a dental filling surgery now. 
since <coughs> I mean I haven't gone to I've I have one filling in my mouth. Um just one. But I haven't gone to a dentist in a year about close to a year. So let's do this. Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Dental Filling Placement. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this Dr. procedure Jeff, today. Did. Fillings are the most common and affordable dental restorative procedure for both children and adults. They're used to restore the function and integrity of missing tooth structure, commonly caused by tooth decay. By placing a filling, we reduce the amount of bacteria in a patient's mouth, extend the life of the tooth, and delay the need for additional dental work indefinitely. Okay. Our patient today has been experiencing some slight hey. discomfort in their lower left first molar, or as dental professionals okay. might say, tooth 19. Before we begin, okay, we need to get some x-rays taken of our patient's teeth. Okay. X-rays, or radiographs, are essential, low-cost diagnostic tools used to examine a tooth's roots check the health of the bone surrounding the tooth, well, we, observe the status of developing we, teeth, and find abnormalities after, such as cavities. After this one. Let's get started. First, well, insert a positioner into the patient's mouth. Okay, well, at least do one more after this one. But we might do another one. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like these. It's Next, not, not position the x-ray cylinder where indicated. The hard plastic against your gums? Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I know, it's... Great. With the <coughs> x-ray cylinder in place, we need to get behind our radiation barrier to reduce the amount of radiation we're being exposed to. And take the picture. New York to Los Angeles Don't worry. The lead apron will protect our patient from any radiation, unnecessary radiation exposure. X-ray. I couldn't have done it better myself. Really? I'll have my assistant handle the other x-rays, so let's move on. Okay. With all of the x-rays completed, it's time to look for potential issues. When examining dental x-rays for cavities, look for hints of changes in the density of a tooth enamel or dentin. These locations will appear as darkened areas on an x-ray. Uh -huh. This is because the decayed portion of the tooth is less intact and the x-rays can penetrate that portion of the tooth. Do you think our patient has a cavity? Yeah, right there. And then, yeah, right there. I agree. Yes. Can you identify yeah. it on the x-ray? Right there. There it is. We need to get that taken care <coughs> of as soon as possible. <coughs> Let's get started. Hmm. Now that you've identified the cavity, we need to apply oh, a topical like numbing gel to the anesthetic injection site to help <coughs> reduce any discomfort the needle <coughs> Needle? <coughs> Next, we can administer the local anesthetic. The patient will, at most, feel a slight pinch. Oh, yeah. Afterward, I the area will become numb for hours, even I though the procedure will know. only last a few minutes. Take the syringe and inject the local anesthetic into okay. the patient's gums, just below... Mm. And now we'll give our patient mm. a few minutes to become completely numb. Okay. Five minutes later. Ooh. It's like yeah. I like some tea. Now that okay. our patient's mouth is numb, we can move on to removing <coughs> the decay. To begin, we'll need to isolate the tooth using a cotton roll. This will give us some space to work. Cotton roll? I never... I don't think they put a cotton roll in my mouth. Looks good to me. Dentists typically remove tooth decay with a burr inserted into a mm -hmm. handpiece. This is what most people refer to as the drill. Yeah. Prepare the area by using the burr to carefully remove all of the decay from our patient's tooth. Okay. Mm. Now that the decay has been removed, hey, we need to figure that. out which type of filling our patient wants, amalgam or composite. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Amalgam fillings are more durable than composite, but they don't have a tooth-colored appearance like composite fillings. They also often require a larger portion of the tooth to be prepared in order to retain the filling. Okay. 
composite fillings are much more aesthetically pleasing and require less drilling than amalgam, but they can be a bit more expensive. Yes. Um, see, I got composite. I'm pretty sure. So let's do composite. Sounds good to me. For a composite <coughs> filling, we need to apply a self-etching dental adhesive to the prepared okay. area of the tooth. This creates a rough surface. Okay. Now dry the area using the air syringe. That is... Next, you'll need to apply the self-etching dental adhesive to the prepared area of the tooth one more time. But, um, okay, why? <coughs> Use the curing light to harden the self-etching adhesive. Light. Nice job. Let's okay. get a filling in there. Take the composite filling syringe <coughs> and place it into the prepared portion of the tooth. Oh. Okay, this is how they do it. Okay. It isn't that fast. Pack though. the composite into the prepared <coughs> area of the tooth <coughs> using a condenser. It usually takes... Mine took an hour. About. <coughs> Next, you'll need to smooth the filling using an instrument called a burnisher. Great. Place the curing light over the tooth and activate it to harden the material. <coughs> Polish the filling using the polishing instrument. Polishing? Is that the... No, that's the drill. At this point, the dentist checks the patient's bite to ensure that everything was normal and the patient doesn't experience any discomfort. Fortunately for our patient, you did an amazing job, and there doesn't okay. appear to be any issues with the filling or our patient's bite. Uh, All done. It looks perfect. <coughs> After the procedure, our patient may experience some sensitivity, but it should subside within one to two weeks. If it doesn't, they'll need to contact their local dentist's office. There is also the possibility that the patient's bite may feel a little off, since being numb can alter their ability to okay. bite normally. Once the patient regains feeling in their mouth, it is advised that they return for an adjustment if it feels like their bite is not normal. In effort to prevent future cavities, our patient will not only need to regularly floss and brush their teeth, but they'll need to ensure that they return to the dentist to have their teeth cleaned at least once every six months. Yeah. It is also recommended that smoking is avoided since it significantly mm -hmm. contributes to the development of tooth decay. And that's a dental filling. You've done a wonderful job. You may want to go back and try out the other type of filling. Or, why not try your skills in another surgery on SurgerySquad.com. So we have cataract eye surgery and LASIK eye surgery. But let's do something else. Let's do carpal tunnel surgery. I haven't had this done. Um, don't know don't even know what it is. It just sounded interesting. It looks like the uh, Spider-Man. You know, Peter Parker's hand injecting. He's injecting webs into himself, for, like web slingers and stuff like that. So, this surgery may contain graphic procedures, inappropriate for children or squeamish adults, and it's not a substitute for for, for professional medical advice. Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Limited Open Carpal Tunnel <coughs> Release Surgery. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I will be guiding you through the procedure today. Carpal really Tunnel nice. Syndrome is characterized by a tingling numbness <coughs> or pain in your hand, and sometimes forearm. <coughs> it develops due to the swelling of a ligament in the wrist, known as the transverse carpal ligament. The swelling of the transverse carpal ligament creates pressure on the median nerve in your wrist. This nerve is responsible for supplying feeling and movement to various parts of the hand. 
Performing repetitive motions with the hand or wrist over a long period is the main cause of carpal tunnel syndrome, okay. and the condition is more commonly seen in women than men. Researchers have also discovered that other medical problems such as alcoholism, arthritis, diabetes, obesity, and infections could also lead to carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. Today we'll be operating on a patient who has been diagnosed hey. with carpal tunnel syndrome after experiencing numbness and weakness in the palm of his hand and thumb. He's the now guy let's put on our gloves the, and get I started. See. The limited open carpal tunnel release surgery is performed <coughs> using a local anesthetic that numbs the carpal tunnel area of the hand and wrist. Okay. If a patient is nervous or uncomfortable, I <coughs> sometimes use a sedative as well. A sedative mm. is a drug given through an IV that places the patient in a dreamlike state. However, our patient today will only receive the local anesthetic. Go ahead and get the operating area numb. Let's go right there. Right there. And right there. <coughs> With the wrist anesthetized, we can now begin the operation. Whoa. I've already tied a tourniquet around healed. the patient's upper arm. Yeah. Can you can go ahead that. and outline where we'll be making our incision? Okay, that's out of line. Right there, and right there. Let's put my initials. Okay, done. Looks good to me. We'll be making a three quarter inch incision at the intersection of those lines. Now take the scalpel and make the incision. Nice. I couldn't have done it better myself. Okay. Now we'll spread the incision wider to expose the transverse carpal ligament. This band of tissue is the cause of the problems. Place the retractors into the incision and spread it open. Ooh. I think you're a natural at this. Okay. Uh. <laughs> With the transverse carpal <coughs> ligament exposed, I'll need you to slip a carpal tunnel guide into the incision. This is a blunt tipped instrument with a groove on the upper surface to accommodate a special knife. The carpal tunnel guide uh -huh. is placed down the carpal tunnel and underneath the ligament and is used to protect the underlying nerve and tendons. Go ahead and push the carpal tunnel guide into place. <coughs> Once it's in position, you'll advance our special knife down the guide to split the carpal ligament. As you push the knife forward, you will feel it cutting through the carpal ligament. Why do we want this? <laughs> Perfect! With the transverse carpal ligament cut, the median nerve is no longer inflamed. Now we can begin to clean and close the incision. Go ahead and irrigate the wound. Okay. When you're finished, I'll release the tourniquet, allowing blood to flow back into the hand. Great. Now you'll close the <coughs> wound using non-absorbable sutures. Okay. With the wound closed, we'll inject additional numbing medicine around the operating site to help relieve some of the immediate pain the patient may feel after surgery. And lastly, we'll place a small dressing over the wound to absorb any residual blood. Yes. We'll immobilize the wrist with a splint and a sling, and after one to three hours, our patient is sent home to recover. Our patient needs to keep in mind that because of some of the medications we used, he may experience a bit of nausea. He will also be given pain medication to help relieve the discomfort he'll feel in his wrist. Once our patient returns home, he'll be asked to follow specific instructions for driving, exercise, and medication. This will include keeping his hand elevated above his heart for the first few days after surgery. About two okay. weeks after surgery, we'll remove our patient's stitches, and he'll be gradually allowed to return to his normal routines in four to six weeks. And that's a limited open carpal tunnel release surgery. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Why not try out some of the other amazing surgeries here on SurgerySquad.com? We have dental filling and wisdom tooth extraction. 
Okay, so we are doing one more, and this is a uh, lapin. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual laparoscopic appendectomy. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be <coughs> assisting you with the surgery today. An appendectomy is needed when there is a blockage between a patient's appendix and intestine. The blockage develops over time and may cause occasional pain. However, left untreated, the patient's appendix could burst, causing severe internal infection and potentially death. Today we'll be using a minimally invasive technique called laparoscopy to remove our patient's appendix. Laparoscopy reduces the exposure of internal organs to contaminants, shortens recovery time, and results in less post-operative scarring. Our patient is a female in her 20s that has been experiencing severe pain in her mid-abdomen, vomiting, and a mild fever. These are all common symptoms of appendicitis. Let's scrub in before this gets any worse. Our patient has already been prepped and is sedated, thanks to our dedicated nursing staff and anesthesiologist. First, we'll insert an endotracheal, or breathing tube, in the patient's mouth and into her throat to help her breathe during the operation. Okay. 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 Since I've already taken care of inserting a catheter into her bladder, we can move on to more important steps. Thanks to the advancements in medical technology, our patient doesn't have to be cut open to have her appendix removed. Instead, we'll strategically place special surgical instruments, called trocars, through small incisions in her abdomen to perform the surgery. We'll begin by making one small incision in her upper abdomen, one in her lower abdomen, and one in her navel, also known as the belly button. I did. I didn't make it far enough. And just... <laughs> fast! You handled that like a pro. Now we need oh. to pump carbon dioxide gas into the patient's abdomen to obtain a better look at the surgical area. Yes. Next, we need to insert our laparoscopic camera through the umbilical trocar. Images from the camera are projected on our monitor to allow us to inspect our patient's abdomen and confirm that the appendix is infected. Okay. The inflamed and swollen area you see is the patient's yeah. appendix. Our next step is to remove it before it becomes an even greater problem for our patient. Okay. The appendicular artery needs to be sealed using a diathermic instrument which uses extreme heat to cauterize the artery. There we go. Ooh. The artery is then divided using scissors. So far, so good. Keep it up. The appendix now needs to be lassoed with a detachable snare. Take the detachable snare and slide it over the appendix all the way to the base. Repeat this step two more times, placing two more loops above the first one. Okay. <laughs> Almost there. Now we need to remove the appendix. Use the scissors to snip between the loops. Notice that when you snip, a little pus comes out, indicating that the appendix is infected. Don't worry about it though, we'll clean up everything. To remove the appendix from the abdomen, place it into this specimen bag and pull it out through the trocar. Now onto the cleanup. There we go. We've inserted a device that sprays saline into the abdomen. Move it around so that everything gets sprayed clean. With a flick of a switch, our saline is suctioned back into the same device. Oh, this like Finally, we'll remove the trocars and close the incisions with a few surgical staples. Staples. I want to do that one though. Why can't I do that one first? Excellent work! The length of the inpatient care and the recovery process following an appendectomy usually varies based on the severity of the appendicitis and the person's age. Luckily, our patient is relatively young and healthy, and we caught her condition early. She should be clear to go home within a day if there are no complications. After being released from the hospital, it is recommended that she limit her physical activity to help the tissues heal faster. 
but she will need to walk short distances several times a day to speed up the recovery process. She should make a full recovery from her appendectomy within four to six weeks since her appendix did not rupture. Had it ruptured, a full recovery may have taken up to eight weeks. And that's an appendectomy. You did amazing. Why not try your surgical skills in another surgery here on SurgerySquad.com? Yeah, the breast implant surgery, or a civilian one, or gold ladders. But, that will be all for this time. And I will see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend, and 